Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous Monday morning in the end times in the former paradise of Usal Wilderness Wilderness Beach somewhere in uh, either Mendocino or Humboldt County, California. Not sure which on this gorgeous Monday morning here in the end times. Uh, Monday, July 31st, 2017, wrapping up another month, unbelievably. <coughs> so I'm going to do, or try to do what I try to do every Monday morning, and that's bring you my economic meltdown roundup rant, where I simply go on the pages of the mainstream media to see how the global industrial economy, otherwise known as the New World Order, is pulling out all the stops to bring down a planet. And we're going to have a special edition, uh, the first third or half of this rant. We're going to go to the South China Sea, the South China Sea, to see how World War III is playing out in the South China Sea, right along the schedule. I have said for years now that do not look to the Middle East for World War III, look to the South China Sea, and here's a few reasons why. Let's start out with an overall view from Quartz Magazine, the South China Sea's untapped oil and natural gas are back in focus. This is for anybody failing to understand oil wars, resource wars unfolding here in the end times. <clears throat> the contested South China Sea has large deposits of oil and natural gas. Perhaps, luckily for the environment, Drilling for these resources has been, well, so far, discouraged by political tension among nations in the regions. In particularly, energy companies worry about China's ongoing insistence that everything within its infamous Nine Dash Line which marks off nearly the entire South China Sea, is its own territory despite an international tribunal invalidating the sweeping claim last year. This uncertainty has, so far, made it hard for global energy companies to justify the hefty investment needed to extract carbon resources from below the sea floor. Recently, though, the carbon resources have started to make headlines again with Vietnam, Indonesia, and the Philippines, and, of course, China, all involved. It is a reminder that however quiet the issue gets at times, untapped energy riches, known as hydrocarbons, are a key element in the South China Sea contest. And uh, then <clears throat> Quartz Magazine, what it does is it gives us a tour around the South China Sea, which 99% of people would not be able to locate on a map, looking at some of the hot spots in the escalating resource war uh, all over the sea, um, trying to figure out which of these hot spots will become battlefields over the next few years. And I'm going to get back to the Asian countries, but don't forget that this, uh, this world war does not just involve Asia. I've already covered how the good old United States 
uh, has already conducted regular what they call freedom of navigation exercises. Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. That have angered Beijing. Earlier this month, the United States sent two bombers over the region, coming just a few months after it sent a warship to carry out a maneuvering drill within 12 nautical miles of one of China's artificial islands that they've built. And so we got the U.S. over there, needless to say, and now Britain plans to send warship to South China Sea in move likely to irk Beijing. Britain now plans to send a warship to the disputed China Sea to conduct freedom of navigation exercises. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. The Defense Minister Michael Fallon said on Thursday. Um, Britain would increase its presence in the waters after it sent four British fighter planes for joint exercises <clears throat> with Japan in the region last year. There you go. Uh, okay. Let's see. I love this hilarious headline. China urges halt to oil drilling in disputed South China Sea. That was bullshit. Yeah, China urges halt to oil drilling uh, by everybody else except China in the disputed South China Sea. This is China's foreign ministry has urged a halt to oil drilling in a disputed part of the South China Sea where Spanish oil company Respal has been operating in cooperation with Vietnam. And there you go. And also we have the United Arab Emirates oil company drilling in uh, waters claimed by Vietnam. <clears throat> yep, yep, yep. Um, several stories around this. Here is, according to Reuters news, Vietnam says others, others, meaning China, should respect its right to drill for South China Sea oil. Vietnam on Friday said other countries should respect its legitimate right to drill for oil in its waters amid growing tension with China over energy development in the South China Sea. So, as I just mentioned, that Spain and the United Arab Emirates sending their oil companies to start these offshore oil rigs in waters claimed <clears throat> by uh, China and Vietnam. And I guess China, shall we say, politely asked, politely asked, Vietnam to halt the drilling, which they appear to have done as of at least when this article was written a couple of days ago. Hmm. <clears throat> How about this one? Other countries building artificial islands in the South China Sea. Yes. Um... Anyway, I think we get the picture, and one more here before we move on to the rest. Uh, I, I really don't know what this is all about. Uh, Philippines 
to consult Asian Council on Joint China Sea Oil Search. The Philippines tried Wednesday to reassure its Southeast Asian neighbors about its proposal to partner with Beijing in oil exploration in the disputed South China Sea. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. On Monday, this uh, this whack job. Pre Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte, Duterte said his government was in talks with China over joint drilling for natural resources in the sea, reversing, reversing years of tension. Uh, in, in, anyway. Let's move on. I think we get the point uh, how World War III is coming along as planned in the South China Sea. But let's see, as long as we're talking about this whack job, Duterte, uh, here, here's your old eco Nazi cheering on Presidente Duterte. Philippines Duterte warns miners, I will tax you to death. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte on Monday said he wanted to stop exporting mineral resources and might close the mining sector completely and tax miners, quote, to death if damage to the environment persisted. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. This is, uh, let's hear from Mr. Duterte himself. The protection of the environment must be made a priority ahead of mining and all other activities that adversely affect the environment one way or another, this policy is non-negotiable. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yes. Uh, anyway, so it goes on with this unadulterated horseshit for uh, the first two-thirds of the article, how Rodrigo Duterte uh, is saving the planet. That was bullshit. And then you get to the very bottom of the story for a little reality check, which I've mentioned in previous rants. Uh, Duterte's first appointment to the environment minister post, Regina Lopez, was fired in May by the Philippine Congress after she led a 10-month crackdown on the industry highlighted by the closure and suspension of 26 of the country's mines. She also tried to impose a ban on open pit mining and a bigger government share in mining revenues, but her orders are, are now under review. Yes, so this, uh, so here is, is the reality check to anybody who uh, tries to go up against these goddamn uh, planet eaters. Um, once again, Duterte talking out his fucking ass. All right, from the Philippines to Nicaragua. Fight against planned Nicaragua canal goes to enter American body. A rural movement in Nicaragua that opposes the government's plan to build a cross-country canal to rival Panama's on Wednesday said it has taken its fight to the Inter-American 
commission of on human rights after all other legal avenues have been exhausted. The government of President Daniel Ortega awarded the $50 billion canal project to a Chinese company in 2013. No excavation work has started yet, but the plan calls for thousands of people to be displaced. Uh, the the company itself claims they're going to leave 27,000 people homeless. The uh, opponents claiming 100,000. Um, the Chinese company said a month ago the project is moving ahead. Uh, there, there you go. Now, of course, this, uh, while I'm cheering them on, taking this to the, uh, the, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, all you got to do is go down there to Ecuador to see, uh, how much good that joke body does going up against these fucking planet eaters. You know, the International Commission on Human Rights was calling out the Ecuadorian government under Rafael Correa years ago had absolutely zero effect on these goddamn planet eaters in Ecuador, and that's exactly the effect it's going to have on Nicaragua uh, if, if they vote in favor of these people protesting this $50 billion uh, completely avoidable environmental disaster unfolding down there in Nicaragua. <clears throat> But we do have some good news coming out of Canada, as these planet eaters I've mentioned before, Patronus drops massive natural gas project in western Canada. Hallelujah. Patronus said on Tuesday it was pulling out of its $36 billion liquefied natural gas exporting project on Canada's west coast, long opposed by environmentalists and native rights um, activists. The Pacific Northwest project was green-lighted in September to green-lighted by Justin Trudeau to build uh, this planet-eating pipeline and two natural gas terminals uh, on the west coast of British Columbia, an area home to a huge nature preserve and wild salmon habitat. Uh, the pipeline built by TransCanada would have had to cross 560 miles of British Columbia wilderness, but lagging natural gas prices and other changes in energy markets contributed to the about face from the Malaysian energy giant and its partners. There you go. Uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had justified his decision to okay the massive energy project and pipeline by pointing to the need for economic growth and stressing that the planet killing project would be environmentally responsible and sustainable. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. All right. From Canada right next door to Alaska, I absolutely loved this uh, story. 
uh, several versions of this absolute uh, manna from heaven for a Trump despising eco Nazi. Trump administration may be investigating investigated after threatening Alaska. Yes. Federal officials should investigate alleged threats made by the White House against Alaska after one of its senators voted against repealing Obamacare, a leading Democrat has claimed. And this is talking about this planet-eating bitch, uh, Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski. I've talked about her in, in these rants before, a major proponent of raping and pillaging Alaska. So she's an absolute darling of Donald Trump. So I I anyway, apparently Murkowski has pissed off uh, Donald Trump by voting against uh, this Obamacare shit that I'm not going to waste my time ever talking about. So anyway, uh, this Republican senator, uh, this planet-eating bitch from hell, sided with John McCain uh, to vote against Trump. Uh, and, and so... Uh, Trump sent in his little Nazi interior secretary, Ryan Zink, um, claiming as retaliation against Murkowski that the interior department was going to shelve all of these goddamn planet-eating uh, projects planned for Alaska. Uh, and it, this was before the vote, Zinka allegedly uh, blackmailed Ms. Murkowski to vote against the motion, because, to vote for the motion, because if she voted against it, it could mean proposed energy projects destined for Alaska would have to be scrapped. Uh, Alaska is currently seeking federal permission, and you better believe it's going to get it, to expand oil drilling. To expand oil drilling. But there are fears that this may now be blocked by the White House in retaliation for Murkowski's vote on health care. <laughs> oh, God, you got to love it. I I I anyway, uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, uh, Ryan Zink. Let's move on. Uh, for anybody who does not understand this, this could be the subject of an entire rant. Uh, the killer fact about the Chinese middle class. Um, this is a commentary from Australia from a guy named Bob Carr. Behind China's recent 6.9% growth in GDP lies a bigger fact. Between now and 2030, the country, meaning China, will add 850 million people to its middle class. I would call that a killer fact. It is equivalent to a new continent emerging somewhere to Australia's north with 850 million more consumers asking Australia to fill its supermarkets, sell them places in our schools and universities, invest our expertise in aged and health care, and then let them come as tourists, investors, and cashed-up 
migrants. And this is just from the Australian perspective, but it is certainly what's true for Australia, true for the entire planet. Uh, 850 million people entering the middle class in China. I've been having this next story uh, every week for about a month now, but I really enjoyed this analysis by this fellow Robert Hunziker, Plastic Chokes the Sea. <clears throat> Plastic is not recycled. One of the great myths of modern day society is that people recycle in earnest, saving the environment. Bullshit level, DEF CON 5! Au contraire! Check out the ocean. It is filled with plastic. Fish and seabirds eat it by gobs and gobs. And according to the World Economic Forum, by 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean. Recently, National Geographic magazine posted news about a new discovery of massive quantities of plastic in the Pacific Ocean, calling it, quote, mind-blowingly vast. And then uh, Robert talks about the Great Acceleration. I need to have a, a rant about the Great Acceleration. Consider the Great Acceleration epitomized by plastics exponential growth does not hesitate onwards and upwards production and profits Wall Street and Trump prosperity only hopefully but not for most for as long as the planet holds up D, 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 D. Okay, I've mentioned this story, but it also uh, bears repeating another fox in the hen house. Coal lobbyist tapped for top spot in Trump's EPA. In a move that will probably surprise no one, but should dismay everyone who breathes air and drinks water, Donald Trump will nominate former coal lobbyist Andrew Wheeler to serve as deputy administrator for the Environmental Protection Agency. Wheeler was a key advocate for the coal industry, who does not believe in climate disruption, which means he will be at home in Scott Pruitt's agency as it moves forwards with its plan to try and cast doubt on climate science. Take that in for a minute the safety of our drinking water, the air our kids breathe, and even our climate will now be in the hands of a top lobbyist for an industry that has worked relentlessly for decades to burn those very protections to the ground. This continues a string of bad and dangerous decisions by Trump and EPA head Scott Pruitt as they continue to roll back clean air and water standards and let the fossil fuel industry pad its bottom line at the expense of our public health. 
um, I, my no shit Sherlock button uh, has been uh, wasted, I guess, from hitting it too many times on this rant. I got a huge laugh out of this uh, out of this headline: Shell oil preparing for world economy that shifts away from oil. Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. And, uh, of course, take a wild guess where the shift they're talking about is shifting from oil to natural gas, from oil drilling to fracking, which more and more reports talking about that the natural gas industry uh, in many ways not only produces more greenhouse gases, mainly in terms of methane, than oil, but even in, then in terms of coal. This is the big shift from oil. Anyway, we do have some more good news Bundy follower gets 68 years for a role in armed Nevada standoff. Good news there. Uh, how about this for a headline? This is just the headline, and it's hard to add much to this. <clears throat> I think Fiesta Cranberry sent me this story. Too fat to stand, and their flesh rots while they're still alive. The real reason America's Franken chickens have to be washed with chlorine as U.S. industrial farming practices are exposed ahead of possible post Brexit trade deal. There you go. I think there's many rants in that headline about Franken chickens heading to Britain after they are washed in bleach to disinfect them. But we're going to wind up with uh, this uh, hilarious new conspiracy theory that is absolutely spot on. Conspiracy theory suggests that Outback Steakhouse is the center of a satanic cult. That is exactly what Outback Steakhouse is the center of. It is the center of the beef industry on this planet. If there is, if, if any industry uh, could be called a satanic cult, it is the growing number of humans uh, adding more and more and more beef to their diets in the 21st century. But uh, I guess I should close with this conspiracy theory and open my Tuesday rant tomorrow morning with this same story. So for this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant, smoke them if you got them. Because despite the fact that I no longer have the sign because I left it behind, we are so fucked. Bye, guys.